Your Excellency Hun Manet, thank you very much for joining us on The World. You're probably the first generation of Cambodian that has had the benefit of relative peace, an external education that has opened your mind to many different ways and systems. Where do you stand in terms of the way forward for Cambodia? I think um, there are factors that we need to uh, preserve and build uh, uh, upon. Things that we need to preserve is the, uh, at any cost, is the peace, stability and security for the nations. That is the fundamental uh, it's a foundation for everything else. Um, it's the development, uh, to stop uh, prevention of further suffering and deaths of the people, like we've seen in the past of our history, because uh, 500 years of internal conflicts. You're widely tipped to succeed your father, Hun Sen. Um, is that your expectation? Well, Cambodia is a multi-party democracy. The constitutions indicate that we have election every five years. So the choice the decisions of who and when to be a leader is up to the people of Cambodia. Not but would you anyone. like to be Prime Minister? Is that an ambition of yours? Would you like to carry on that mantle? The answer is I don't know. <laughs> you must. <laughs> yeah, I think it's again, it's the, uh, the wish and the desire of the people. But if, if the people judge and that is the time will tell, would that be something that you would find fulfilling to lead your people? If the population, if the Cambodian people's, um, you know, desires, then so that's their wish. But it, has it been something within your family that you have been groomed for? Do you, have you talked about it for many years? Is it something that you felt? No. No, no. not at all? No, actually, um, our fathers um, have stated many times that uh, he doesn't want any of his children to follow <laughs> in politics. Well, you haven't listened very well, have you? <laughs> no, you know, what is politics? Politics is, you know, it's has so broad meaning, you know, considering as uh, doing political work or preparation for the, uh, you know, to, to hold political office, I think. That's not necessarily true. You know, what you do, what I've done in the past is purely for humanitarian basis, for example. Uh, the engagement of uh, youth, it's just with the passions to have that. Whether it is uh, for politics or anything, it's not that's what the concern. The concern is that how much it could contribute to society, how much, you know, with the limited time I have on this earth that I could contribute uh, to, you know, uh, uh, you know, fulfilling the needs of m many people and that. Let's talk for a moment about, of course, your father has been in power uh, for 30 years um, and, and you've heard the criticisms before, um, repression, corruption, and now potentially they may point the finger and say there's nepotism in terms of you and your brother coming through. Um, w does that sit uncomfortably with you? Do you see that there is a need for a different perception? I mean, there's, you know, um, no way to hold people for making judgment on things. You know, that's human beings. People would see a glass, would say some would say half empty, would say half full. It's their views, it's their decision of making up their mind uh, that we all respect that. But the facts of the matter is, what's really matter is deep down inside, what do you feel conviction of your actions? Mm -hmm. Your action is, uh, you know, my father is leading the country for 30 years. The fact that the country has moved from the day where people were being killed during the genocide uh, region up to the total peace and stability of the win-win policies that never achieved in Cambodia, the inter internal unity was absent for about 500 years. 98, that's when the whole country was under one unified government for the first time in about 500 years. All the peace and prosperities, all the liberties, all the freedom of expressions, the rights to life, the rights to education, the rights to basics, welfare, the rights to, you know, um, whole form, association is there. Mm. But by the same token, other countries that have moved in that same direction inevitably have to deal with those issues of corruption and, and, and giving everyone equal rights. Please name the countries in this world that don't have corruptions. 
Some to greater or lesser extent. Yes. yes it's part mm -hmm. of the journey. Mm -hmm. The matter is, is not what we call a moral relativism because it's happened in other countries. It should be all right, happen in Cambodia. It's not. Mm -hmm. The government, especially the prime minister, has taken and has speaking in public and taken many actions to counter and to eradicate and reduce the level of corruption. It started by the fact that we acknowledge there is still some problem to a certain extent, but there also progress in this realm. You know, the establishment of uh, anti-corruption unit, the reform in many uh, public sectors uh, services, the reform in education services and all this stuff and the arrest and conviction of many high-level officials that conduct in that. So do you talk to your father about how long he's going to stay? <laughs> <laughs> and for you, if the people want you to, you'd be Prime Minister. <laughs> do I take that as a yes? <laughs> no. <laughs> not, no, not yes. Not yet, but in time. Not, no, not yes. Hun <laughs> Manette, uh, Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.